Hello everyone, it's me Clayton. I just finished watching episode 2 of Invincible Season 2. So, in this episode, Mark Grayson and all of his friends get to graduate from high school. And as part of their summer break, Invincible gets to fight Doc Seismic again and a bunch of magma people. He gets to fight Dark... He gets to fight one of the Guardians of the Globe's sidekicks who has discovered the Shadowverse. He gets to fight a giant sea monster to make up for his father killing the King of Atlantis. And we get to see the effects of Omni-Man's ab uh, views of uh, Debbie as she despises any idea of a woman being treated as a pet. One thing I really like about this season is how the events of the season one finale have clearly shaped every single character's arc here. Whether it's the destruction of the city that Adam Eve is attempting to help with, but her attempts to help don't always work out, and they even make things harder for her dad, for instance. Or when it comes to Omni-Man's comments about his wife Debbie, how he viewed her as a pet, which naturally caused her to not only develop some trauma from her own husband being, being a complete monster, but also that he never truly loved her, that he saw her as inferior, that he saw all humans as inferior to him. But it really hits her the hardest, naturally, because she was the closest to him. And Sandra Oh's vocal performance is definitely one that deserves a lot of praise for really digging deep to make you feel sorry for Debbie. And I already felt sorry for her back then, but now I just want to give her a hug. But then again, Mark can do that for me. But thankfully, things aren't all doom and gloom in this episode. There's this funny alien named Russ, played by Ben Schwartz, who is joining the Guardians of the Globe, and there's a really funny g gag where he compares hit how he got his powers to a, a typical superhero origin story, but then we see the dark and grisly truth of what his origin story is, and sh we see that he's completely lying about it. Not that the Immortal or the Guardians of the Globe need to know. Speaking of the Immortal, he's apparently in a relationship with Duplicate, which is a bit icky considering how old the Immortal is compared to her, but I doubt Immortal really cares. Though, even though I find Rex Splode to be completely irritating, pure, which is intentional by design, he's supposed to be annoying, he does have a point that Immortal is basically a giant hypocrite for being so hard on him while also getting to go into the shower with Duplicate and do you-know-what. I have no idea what Duplicate sees in him, but apparently he's better than Rexplode. And speaking of uh, voice actor cameos, that's Tatiana Maslany who gets to play the Queen of Atlantis, and thankfully she's way more tolerable here than she was in She-Hulk. Though, again, I blame the writers for that, not her performance. She was clearly just working with what she had there. On top of that, I really like that they're building up this Lizard League even though the leader gets killed off near the end of the episode. To me, the Lizard League kind of feel like a dollar store knockoff of the Serpent Society from Marvel. But then again, all the characters from Invincible felt like versions of DC and Marvel characters that we already know, just with a bit of a twist to them. So the Serpent Society being so easily toppled does come across as a funny bit for me. But of course, the actual villain that we need to focus on is Angstrom Levy, who does get a pretty cool after a mid credit scene with uh, Mark when he's in another universe that has a female Cecil and a female Donald, which is a bit odd, but then again, it's the multiverse. They can do a ton of stuff there. Just look at what Marvel's done with their multiverse concepts. Plus, I just think, even though we're only two episodes in, this season's already probably done its multiverse concepts way better than Marvel has. My point is, the emotional beats hit hard, the action scenes still look great, and I really like most of the storylines that they're building up. So who knows if we'll even see uh, Omni-Man himself this season, but when we eventually do, it's going to be a huge moment. I just know it. See you next time.